Hello and welcome to another Middle State Subcommittee report for the Queen Anne's County Public School System uh, for QAC-TV. We are here today with Thad Kalvinovich, who is the, uh, the Director of Support Services for the Queen Anne's County Public School System. Uh, and he uh, is going to be talking today about subcommittee number two, which is government, governance and leadership. Uh, so welcome. And I want to thank you very much for coming to do this interview uh, today. I appreciate it very much. Uh, Thad, if you could talk a little bit about your subcommittee, uh, governance and leadership, can you tell, tell us a, a little bit about, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that committee? Sure. The, the uh, governance and leadership committee really um, is, is determined by three distinct groups. The first one, the governance refers to the actual Board of Education members and their leadership. Then we also uh, speak of the central office leadership, which would be the superintendent and her executive committee. And then the school leadership is, would be the third uh, type, and that would be the uh, actual school leaders, the principals and assistant principals. Um, the makeup of, uh, of the committee, uh, when I was trying to decide who would be the best members, um, we, we felt that it would be important to choose members who knew uh, and would feel comfortable talking about and uh, explaining the workings of, the, of those three distinct groups. So with that in mind, uh, I was chosen as the, as the Director of Operations and part of the Executive Committee to lead this committee. Uh, Dr. Williamson, the superintendent's on the committee, and then we have several uh, principals, assistant principals, supervisors, uh, teachers, and we also have PTA representation. So that uh, it, it was felt that um, the teachers certainly would know their, their principals well, and, and uh, when we get into principals and administrators, they, they know both the workings of the central office folks and uh, first-hand knowledge of some of the Board of Education, the governance part, um, and also the uh, um, academic dean, uh, which would also have uh, knowledge of, of both principals and the central office working. So we try to get together a group that, that would feel comfortable uh, discussing these three distinct leadership uh, sections. Okay, well, let, let's go back. Let's go back about a year. And I guess I understand the process probably started sometime around March. Uh, and uh, you took on uh, this role as a subcommittee chair. Take us back to that time. And how did you uh, organize your committee and organize the, the work that was in front of you at that time? Okay, well, well based on what I've just explained with, uh, with the makeup of the committee itself, uh, we felt that it would be important to uh, look at a lot of the different things. First of all, with the governance, uh, what we tried to examine were the different types of orientation mm -hmm. that new board members would get from MABE, from the uh, principal or from the uh, superintendent's uh, leadership, um, from handbooks, from evaluation tools, all those kinds of things. And the committee uh, uh, made sure we tried to get those things together to understand the way they worked and uh, to get a good understanding of, of the uh, governance section mm -hmm. of the uh, of the standard. Um, we also looked very closely at the surveys that were given, the middle state surveys, by the parent student, by the uh, staff, and also the executive team and, and board members were also asked to take those surveys. So we, uh, we concentrated a lot on those, on those surveys also. So that was a lot of your data when you looked at uh, sort of looking and analyzing the data uh, for of the different leaders, whether it's right. the Board of Education or the central office leadership or the superintendent or the school-based leadership, uh, you, had, you had surveys. And so you had parent surveys and then student surveys that came out. Uh, and were you able to get those results by school? We were. We were able to get the results by school. Uh, we found that at the school level, there were very few uh, schools that actually uh, did not rate their leaderships high. They certainly did have some suggestions for, for improvements in some cases, but by and large, we found that uh, the teachers in the system uh, were very pleased with, with the leadership at the school level. So the indicators uh, that for, for this, this subcommittee, and I know there were a number of them, and, and I guess when, when we were talking about the surveys for the parents and the students in the spring, and as you mentioned, the staff, which, which came out uh, at the beginning of the school year this year, 
those indicators were, were in the sort of the form of questions. What sort of things were the parents and the students asked? What were some of the indicators? Uh, well, they were, they were asked uh, about the types of leadership that, that the principals gave at the school, whether they felt that they, were, they had the opportunity to make suggestions to, uh, to observe the workings of the school. Um, we found that there was a lot of collaborative leadership between the, the principals at the school level and, and the uh, executive uh, curriculum folks, mm -hmm. such as the, the assistant superintendent of curriculum or director of curriculum and the, uh, and the superintendent. Um, they learned that there were a lot of data-driven goals mm -hmm. you know, that were set at the school level. And, and those were some of the different types of indicators that, that were, were being examined. And so you used the data from these surveys. That was your primary source of data for, for looking at the, at the results because you're doing a self-analysis, you're doing a self-study, uh, you're doing a self-assessment, and you're, you're trying to determine you know, the level of leadership for the county in those three areas that you mentioned, whether it's the Board of Education or the central office or, or at the schools. Um, and uh, uh, were, were there other documents that you looked at? other documentation um, that, that was available for you? Um, well, we, we looked at uh, evaluation tools. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't specifically uh, study any, any specific evaluations of, of folks, but um, there were handbooks, Board of Education handbooks. There were handbooks that were shared with, uh, with the governance as they were being orientated. Uh, there were MABE, access to MABE kinds of activities, workshops, and so on. Um, we looked at roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. of the various leaders, job descriptions, um, the evaluation tools I believe I mentioned a minute or so ago, policy and procedure handbooks, and also the ethics policy that, that uh, we're all to abide by. Right. And you, uh, you, you started to mention a little bit about uh, some of the results of the surveys and some, some, of, your, some of your findings. Uh, overall, or uh, if, you could, if you could talk about what you discovered uh, through your work uh, and what, your, what, what kind of findings your committee came up with as far as the leadership and governance in this county. Okay. Overall, we discovered that the, the standard itself was met. Uh, we discovered that um, there's a very collaborative elf, uh, effort and leadership style between the superintendent uh, the director of curriculum and the school leadership and uh, there's school improvement teams that work uh, very diligently in each of the schools that uh, goals are set uh, based on data. Um, we found that overall uh, the indicator w was very strong. Uh, there were some concerns on the, uh, the governance issues that uh, it was felt that there could be some improvement there. there there's no real strong tool for evaluation of the actual governing body, the Board of Education, um, and a few other just, just minor partial uh, indicators that, that could use some improvement. But by and large, uh, the surveys indicated and the committee through their studies uh, felt that the, uh, it's a very strong uh, leadership, both at the central office and at the school level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, you, you have this information and you're working towards, I mean, you know, uh, the way we kind of look at middle states, it, you know, the, the visiting team will come uh, February 27th for, for a few days, uh, spend some time with us. But really, this is, that's not the end of the process. Really, this is just the beginning. This is the beginning as we, as we take this information and we try to move forward as a system. Um, you know, you've got some great information on, on, on uh, leadership and governance and, and uh, and, and it sounds like there's some great things going on in the school system. Not really surprised, you know, being, being in this county for a long time. I, I know at the, we have a high level of leadership, uh, really, by and large, throughout the school system. Um, as you look at these results, um, have you had a chance to share them with anybody besides here with me? Well, what we did was we did share uh, the results with the, uh, with the district-wide uh, Middle States Evaluation Committee. That really is the only group that has been shared with uh, at this point. Um, so I'm sure as the as the visiting committee comes and and through the through the cable TV that that more and more will be shared as as time goes on. Okay. And I guess one one last question is if you reflect back now, you know, on this past on this past year and working on this and it, and and it sounds like 
you and your committee have put an awful lot of hours into this uh, into this effort, and so I, I know that uh, we really appreciate that uh, all your hard work. Uh, as you went through the process and you look back on this process, were there any um, aha moments, any anything that you learned, or something that kind of sticks out in your mind as you went through the process? I think, from my viewpoint, uh, having the opportunity to sit in on a lot of the uh, uh, executive level meetings, uh, it just reinforced my belief how strongly the, the leadership of, uh, of Queen Anne's County Board of Education uh, strives to do what's best for, for the students. It just reaffirmed uh, all those feelings that we've had, uh, and I think some of the members of the team were even, even more impressed than they were at the beginning. Uh, seeing the dedication and, and uh, how everything is data driven and uh, everything is geared toward the uh, toward the student and what's best for the student and, and helping them to become uh, productive members of society. And it sounds like uh, the things that you learned, I think a lot of uh, a lot of our, our parents and a lot of our students and a lot of our staff uh, feel the same way. You know, I mean, it, it sounds like the results were very positive, you know, uh, it, in, in, in most of the areas, and so that's a, that's a very very encouraging news. And as as we take this information and move forward, I think we really have a nice document uh, to work with. So I want to thank you, Thad, for your time. This concludes a another segment of the Middle State Subcommittee uh, for the Standard Two on Governance and Leadership. And we'll see you next time. Hello, this is uh, Brad Engel, and this is another segment of the Middle States Subcommittee Reports. Uh, we are here today with Robin Landgraf, who is the Chief Financial Officer for the Queen Anne's County Public School System, and she is the Subcommittee Chair of, of the Subcommittee, wait for it, Finance, that's right. She's in charge of the, uh, uh, the, accredit the self-accreditation process. Uh, in the area of finance, and uh, I think you're probably the person that should be doing that, uh, taking a look at that. So we're going to be—we have some questions for her about this about this process. Um, as you know, um, in February, uh, late February, February 27th, we will have a visiting team coming into Queen Anne's County to uh, take a look at our our process, our our excellence by design um, application to middle states as we seek accreditation. Um, now let's go back. Let's take us back to, uh, I guess, eight or nine months ago, and maybe even further than that, um, as you sort of organized your committee. Who, who was on your committee? And tell us a little bit about that process. Okay. Um, well, on my committee, I had one elementary school principal. That was Mrs. Camps, yeah. from Matt, who's now at Mattapique Elementary. When we started this process, mm -hmm. she was at Bayside. <laughs> um, Tina Houston, who is the finance secretary at Ken Island Absolutely. High School. Absolutely. well. Uh, Tony Schelt, who is our coordinator here of um, supporting services, and then two members of my team, Diane Wright, who mm -hmm. is the grant specialist in my department, and then Jen Boda, who basically takes care of a lot of the construction fund type things. Um, and essentially our committee, we've only actually met twice now um, because I worked backwards. I had a really hard time kind of getting my head around this whole concept of um, trying to self-evaluate ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I waited until we got a lot of the survey results that came back. Um, and then I worked with Ann Thomas very closely, mm -hmm. putting together all those results and trying to accumulate that data. Mm -hmm. And then we put that to the committee. Mm -hmm. we, um, so we, we kind of worked backwards. We gathered most of the information. We kind of put together a draft report mm -hmm. and then started working with the committee. And basically we're looking for them to, um, you know, review what we did, either agree or disagree with it. Um, they've asked some additional questions, so I've gone back and gotten them some additional information as far as the committee members go. Um, well, so, okay, so you're, you, what you, the first thing you did, the or one of the first steps that you took once you formed your committee and once you got the sort of the framework in place for your mm -hmm. committee is you, you looked at the survey data uh, from the parents and from the students and then later on um, from, from the staff in the Queen Anne's County School System. Right. So you looked at that data and then you sort of prepared and, and you kind of worked backwards from that. So what, what were some of the findings in, in that? Uh, um, well, basically... It, 
unfortunately, what we really found was um, the staff really doesn't know much about the finances that are going on. And not so much from what they checked off as far as the survey's results go, but the comments that were made. Um, the students in the schools, which is, I guess, really good news, is most of the students felt like they had adequate supplies and materials and whatnot to do what they needed to get an excellent education. Mm -hmm. Most of the parents felt that there were adequate supplies and materials in the schools for their students. So mm -hmm. those were good things. Um, the thing that the only area that we really found that we felt we needed to um, really concentrate some effort in is making sure that the schools are following procedures that we've set. Okay. Um, other than that, there were basically, there were 10 indicators system-wide, mm -hmm. and most of that was about written policies and making sure you had your audits and insurance coverage and those types of things. And then there were four indicators at the school level that, you know, was the control over mm -hmm. um, what they had, if they had input, and was there adequate notice to parents and whatnot if there were any fees that needed to be charged. And we did very well on the, on the component school indicators. Okay. Um, now, and now the component school was each, each school is what you're each, talking about? Right, okay. Right. Right. Each school in the system, the students did the evaluation as did the staff, and we did very well in that area. Mm -hmm. um, it, like I said, the only one that we really felt that we had some concern about was the oversight from the central office overseeing the schools. And it, this was something that came up in an audit that we recently had. Mm -hmm. And I would have to say the biggest problem we have there is adequate staff to be able to do that. Okay. Um, and that was a finding in our legislative audit, and that was our response to it. We just, you know, the, having the resources here, the personnel resources here centrally to be able to do that oversight was difficult. Now, and, and, but I, I want to go back to something else you said. As part of, of, of uh, it, talking about the indicators and looking at the survey data from the parents and the students, uh, by and large, the parents and the students felt like there were adequate uh, materials of instruction and adequate funding uh, for the school. So they felt pretty strongly about that? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Most of that was, I would say, in the upper 70, 80 percent range of people mm -hmm. were saying that they felt they had adequate resources. Okay. And, uh, and what you're saying is one of the challenges is that the sort of the... Um, connection between the central office and the schools, the oversight, that was a, uh, an issue. And, uh, but that also came up in the audit as well. Right. So, and, that's, and one of the key parts of that is staffing. And yeah. is that staffing at the school level? No, staffing, staffing here at the okay. central office. Okay. Right. Um, because basically we have, a, we have a, a, um, an accounting manual mm -hmm. that we use. We give it to the schools and say these are the procedures you're supposed to file as far as, you know, um, follow as far as you know, revenues being received, disbursements being made, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And having the adequate staff to go out and, if you will, audit that, police that, and make sure that all those things are happening is, is where we feel we have a little difference. Now, besides the survey data, did, were, were there any, what other sort of documents did you look at? I can imagine there's all kinds of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I brought my little pile here. Uh -huh. um, you know, we have quite a few documents. So essentially, the the... Um, the annual mm -hmm. budget, which we looked at that because of the it was asking about input from all the mm -hmm. component schools and whatnot. And we do we sit down each year and we meet with all the principals, um, who in turn have already met with their staffs to get input into what the budget's going to be. Mm -hmm. They meet with us and then internally the executive team mm -hmm. sits down and, and drafts up that document. So that was one thing. Audit reports, we have more audit reports than you will ever know. I think for the last four or five board meetings, we've had audit report presentations. Um, we have Every year, we have an independent company come in and do our financial report um, audit, basically to say that all the, money's being, all the money that is being spent has been recorded properly and is in the financial statements and properly. Mm -hmm. Then we have... A, that same group that looks at all of the federal programs that we deal with. Mm -hmm. MSD comes in and audits every other year, but they audit two years when they come, so really they hit every year. Mm -hmm. right. So 
every year we have at least three audits done on the financial statements. In addition, this year we had um, the retirement system came and audited our books, mm -hmm. and the legislative audit came and that's you know the state requirement is every six years the legislative auditors have to come now they look at a little different um, what they're looking for is not so much whether we're recording everything properly they're mm -hmm. looking at the procedures and whatnot that we have if, if we're properly um, internal control is what they call it if mm -hmm. we're properly putting everything through the procedures and one of the biggest things that we had in that particular audit was the fact that we have a small staff. Mm -hmm. um, they like to see every duties segregated, that, you know, nobody's duties are overlapping. Well, when you only have, you know, a half a dozen people on the staff, yeah. it's very difficult to do that. So that was their biggest issue. Um, so we looked at all of those. Then we went on, um, what other documentation? The insurance coverage was one of the key things that they wanted us to look at and we have all that through the MAVE insurance pool so mm -hmm. we're more than adequately covered there. We had the documentation for the procedures that we follow. MSDE puts out a guideline, well it's not a guideline, it's a reporting manual mm -hmm. that's you know an inch and a half thick that we have to follow as far as how we record things, where we record things, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. So. And then we have the internal manual that we use that we spoke up before mm -hmm. that we give to the schools for them to follow. Right. So that's some of the documentation. Uh, that yeah, that just some at. of the documentation. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I'm really gaining a, a new understanding of this uh, of this area. Uh, don't get too, don't get involved in finance too much, and I can see you guys are very busy down there. Yes. Um, but but. Now, if we, if you, if you look at your your um, self study, you look at over overall of the self study, and and you, uh, I mean, how do you feel about it overall? Overall, I think we're very strong, um, and I think that's supported by the, especially our independent auditors that come in. Um, we had essentially for the last ten years, we've had no findings in our federal compliance audit. Um, I've been here for 23, 24 years now. We've always gotten what they call an unqualified opinion on our financial audit, which means that it's clean, there's no um, question costs or those kinds of things. And whenever we have MSDE come in and audit us, essentially what they're looking at is more the enrollment. Mm -hmm. So we have had a couple small things where we, you know, one child didn't have the immunization or we counted a child that withdrew, you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. But very, very minor. Right. Um, same thing with the retirement audit when they came in and did that. Uh, we had, I think, one minor finding on that. Mm -hmm. So I feel very strongly that we have very strong financial mm -hmm. practices in place. And I, and really, I, th I think that the, um, all the surveys and everything supported that. So now that, uh, well, you know, I, I like to, to say that... Um, this is, you know, the, the visiting team comes in February, but, but that's really just the beginning of the process, not the ending. It's the ending of one part, but also we're starting something else. Now that you finished the self-study and, and you have all this information, um, it, going, thinking back from the beginning, what, what, do you, what did you learn from this? And were there some things that kind of stood out, uh, uh, you know, during the process as things that could be beneficial to you and your department? Well, I, I you know, like I said, I think the biggest thing that we learned was about the oversight at the school level. And, and the other thing that we really learned was how little our staff knows about the finances. Um, just having the conversation here with you, right. um, you know, you've said that you've learned a lot from what, you know, what I'm telling you. And, and that's the same way it is at the school level. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the survey, like I said, the survey itself didn't really reflect that, but the, uh, all of the comments that were from the staff, it was very apparent that they didn't really understand what we do. So I'm not exactly sure how we go about um, trying to help them be more informed mm -hmm. of what's going on. Um, I don't know if that's something that will work toward the principals doing that or if that will be something that we'll do more centrally. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that this board and our superintendent is very interested in making sure budget information gets out there and that we're communicating that well. 
Um, I don't, I'm not sure how else to get the rest of the information out there. So. But that's a good starting point, though, I think, mm -hmm. to, you know, to have that knowledge, and, and, and then you can just make an action plan and kind of go from there. So, right. Right. okay. Well, I uh, want to thank you, Robin, for, for your welcome. time. I think uh, this is very informative. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Middle State Subcommittee Report.